Now they've eaten a lot of grass, and you definitely see they like hanging out over here. They're, they're already digging. What the heck? I mean, this is a salcata for you. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So we're staying on the track of updates and right now we are in your giant tortoise greenhouse mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if the echo is picking up because this place is ginormous <laughs> and I can hear an echo. So how about we give you guys a little bit of an update of kind of how the greenhouse has been evolving and also maybe some issues maybe you haven't seen or how it's been working better than you thought. Sure. Um, so first off the red little guys. So it is getting colder here and uh, with these guys, they spread all around. So what's best is I just pull them in for a couple months in the winter. So I'll probably pull them in December, January, February. So three months out of the year, they'll be inside, just more constant temperatures. Uh, with the littler guys, I'm always much more conscious about the cooler temperatures than the big guys. Um, the big guys are gonna have their heated, they have their heated houses. Um, so it's much easier and they seem to be a little smarter, the adults than the babies. Uh, so they're good. So with the babies, just close them in the winter for a couple months, three months uh, inside, nine months outside. I think it's a pretty good deal just to uh, at least be in the, what I'd say is the nicest tortoise greenhouse in the world. Now the big tortoises, they're doing great out here. Now with the cooler temps, the sun's a lot weaker as far as the UV index, uh, how, much, how much heat it's putting out essentially. We got the low, low bulb temperature on there in the winter. Yeah, and you're saying that you're saying it's colder in the winter. I I have gotten used to the California temperatures because oh. I went back for uh, Thanksgiving <laughs> and it was about 40, 40 ish degrees. Yeah. And so I wore pants today, guys, what? and it is 83 degrees. I was not <laughs> expecting it. I get out here. I'm like, I am sweating. So yeah. we say cooler. There are some cold snaps, which yes. maybe is like a week of a time where it's like 60s. It, yeah, it's a cold front, cold. essentially. So we get yeah. a couple nights in the cold. But the majority of the time down here is still like 70s, 80s. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's still not the 95, 98 degrees and super strong, intense UV index. Um, but So we give them, uh, as you can see, we give them more access to sun. Uh, still have those shady spots just to be 100% safe. Yeah, because you open um, this up quite a bit. Yes, and we keep the sides closed just for less wind. Uh, just what that'll cool things down and it's easier. So when we do get a cold front, all we have to do is close the roof and the uh, the curtain, even though it is just a flip of a button. Yeah, and right now all the tortoises are gonna be kind of hiding. I saw a few yeah, down that way that were out, so but- We got a vacant enclosure, have plans for putting stuff in here that we can't disclose yet. We'll oh, not disclosure. Ryan doesn't even know that, uh, does he? I don't know what we're putting in there. Vacant enclosure here. What are we putting in this one? I don't know. I don't know, okay. Honey, right? We're putting Honey, honey the rabbit. That's Julia's rabbit. Um, so this one, there's red foots in here. There, you can see she's hanging out in the shade back there. Way back there. Let me these see if I can- These guys are boring. I don't know. I they love red just sit foots, there. but these guys, like, are they, just, they just sleep all the time. All the dang time. They are so ungrateful. So this is the five red foots and the sulcata. Now, what's cool is- They're already digging. What the, the heck? I mean, this is a sulcata for you. So she show, she is showing you guys how deep the sheep pile goes. And this is exactly why we buried the sheep pile two, two foot plus, just because, especially with sulcatas in here, they will try to dig that. And that was her in a day. Now, are so, you gonna fill that in so she doesn't yes. make it deeper? Yep. So it's kind of just preventative maintenance. Exactly, yeah. And, and that's the you biggest thing with sulcatas is people have them as pets down here and they dig out because of that. I mean, that that she can do that in a matter of couple hours yeah and there's the culprit guys so not even a very big sulcata that's her um I was, is oh it's a boy uh if it is a boy it's a small boy so they, they get much larger than this so yeah, if, if he can dig that right. hole imagine what a giant one can do yeah and then you do have the red foots in here too which yep. this one's chopping down on some food mm -hmm. little cherry head i think uh no no regular not, red foot regular red foot chopping and down the, she got scared the collard greens big Ooh. you can see they're chewing a lot of grass Sorry. The other issue we've had is algae buildup. Uh, I think there's a little bit of sulfur in the water, so it definitely promotes algae buildup. You can see we run the water every day, so the water itself is clear, but it gets a lot of algae buildup on the side. So we're gonna get Plecostomus and just algae eater fish that will reside in here that will eat all that algae. And also to stir up the water, because if the water's constantly moving, it's gonna be harder for algae to build up, yes. correct? Like yes. more we, like the string algae. We run the water six hours a day. 
and that's why it is clear. It's just, again, that bottom has a layer of crud. But you're right, there's still loose debris that the fish will kick it up as well and help filter it through. Now they've eaten a lot of grass and you <laughs> yeah. definitely see they like hanging out over here. There's still some grass back there, on, especially on their hill. You can definitely tell this is their feeding spot. So with the cat palms I put in here, they started chewing them up. I put a bamboo barrier, they said, Forget that. They laughed at us essentially with the bamboo barrier, mowed it down, ate the tree completely. So I think we'll take them out. Yeah, um, no point of that. But this girl's no, coming over to us. Plenty of dusted collard greens here. But, and here's another one right here. And these are Burmese black tortoises. Yes, and they're more tropical, uh, well, not tropical, more of a mountain, well, they are a mountain species, the Burmese black mountain tortoise. Um, and also, also semi -car carnivorous species. They are too. semi carnivorous, uh, as well as semi aquatic, I'd say. They're, they're, they are in here almost every day. They definitely do their afternoon soaks. So you basically got crocodiles with shells. Yes. Because exactly. they, they also nest similar to crocodiles. They, they dig up a nest, right? Yes. Yeah. I like to cons I like to look at these guys as the tortoise, essentially the snapping turtles of the tortoise world. Uh, these guys are, like you said, carnivorous. They have a big beak. Uh, like the, uh, it's very long, like a, uh, like a snapping turtle. It's not, you know, more of the broader look that you get from other tortoise species. Um, and they love to swim. Very interesting tortoise species. They are, they are. I love these guys. They are super cool. And then last, but certainly not least. But actually, let's, let's talk about their pond real quick while we're walking over there. Much bigger pond than yes. the other ones. Much deeper as well. Now, how deep is that pond? Just for, I just want to make sure people that haven't seen the original post, yeah. they go back and watch that, but also you can kind of touch on it. This is roughly about a foot deep. So it's it's mentally, meant just for them to kind of bounce around a little bit, but obviously not fully submerge. Um, so in the middle, they'll bounce around um, and easily walk through it um, just so they kind of get that swimming effect. But so, I have seen these guys actually swim through deep water. So you've kind of built into the enclosure. You've you prepared for them. These enclosures were built specifically for exactly. them. Exactly. These were built for Burmese blacks. The size, the depth, everything. And now last step in the greenhouse, we got Crush. Oh, wow. Thanks, Crush. Which is pooping. Yep. He is pooping right now. Thanks, Crush. Now, how's Crush been doing? Because obviously we have, have some mobility well, As issues. you can see right there. Like, oh. he's showing us right there how, well, <laughs> what are you doing there? But as you saw, guys, how he lifted those back legs to defecate, um, he has gotten so much strength in his back legs, especially. Uh, so it's awesome to see. And that's what I love about the hill, too, is it kind of it, another enriching uh, element of these enclosures. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, back there is his now newly labeled mud wallow, even though luckily it's a little drier now. And but. he's starting to walk to us. And he's actually got a lot of mobility, if you guys can see, in his back legs pushing off on those. Yes, yeah. Which again you can tell the viewers when you got him he had zero mobility in his back legs yeah well and i and my buddy got him a month before and he was also doing um uh enrichment and essentially physical therapy with him he had zero mobility like at all so, yeah at all so he started to get for um his legs in the front mobile but when he came here he had absolutely zero mobility in his back legs he would just drag his shell everywhere and that's another reason why if you don't if you're not equipped and you don't know what you're doing don't get a giant tortoise that requires all this space as well as like uvb um, and all the lighting and mm -hmm. nutrients and calcium that if you don't give it to them are going to have issues then you have a tortoise that lives 100 years and it's going to have uh its life impaired basically yeah, yeah. or it's living impaired mm -hmm. which luckily he came here and you're able to give him physical therapy you got him a nice house um and he's doing great, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, he, he walks goofy like that sometimes. But also I've seen him stand up here on his back legs, almost try to climb over this. Um, stand up like, you know, it's, what's I what I love about these guys is when you start petting them, it's like, it's like a airlift or hydraulics in a car where they just like jack their whole body up. It's so cool. And again, tell him what, the, what he is. He's, a, he's an Aldabra tortoise. Yep, and this is the largest second guy. largest piece of tortoise in the world, right behind Galapagos, correct? Yeah, there's like, there's yeah. maybe some debate. Yeah, I think there, I think it's kind of like Nile Nile crocodile, and saltwater crocodile. I mean, there's been a ton of reportings of giant Nile crocodiles. Um, I think there's more. I think um, salties are probably more prevalent in areas that are more documented. 
So I think that's probably why you hear about much larger salties, but um, there's definitely some giant mammals out there. So I think it's much like that, that, you know, kind of can sway depending on the year. Even. Yeah. But either way, top two. Yes. Yeah. But just to show, just to show you, both of those species, they get massive. All right, here's yet another update of the animals of the new facility. Yeah, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, follow us on Instagram at Primitive Predators, and we'll see you on the next one. See you guys.